Hello. Uh, yes, I'm Linton here, uh, trying to trying to broaden your thinking, hoping if you get to thinking um, enough, then when we you may go back and look at some really truly important things. This is Bell's inequality. Uh, I, you may know enough physics to be able to say, ah, Bell's inequality is a is a forgotten theory in the dusty back shelves of physics. Uh huh. It is also the most profound theory anybody ever had. We'll get back to theories as a general thing. Okay, I've been meaning to give um, two more talks about what you find if you treat the universe like a puzzle instead of something emotionally charged. And one surprisingly reason and passion give us completely different interpretations of what the universe is like. Uh, my uh, shriveled old brain has forgotten what the final climactic section 6 is, but I remember I was going to do Bell's inequality um, uh, for number 5, so we'll do that now, and I don't know if I'll ever remember what the other one was, um, and then we'll stray off to other stuff another time. So, um, theories. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of theories. There is, for instance, Darwin's theory of evolution. And um, Darwin had nothing to add to what Aristotle had already said, um, uh, except Ar Aristotle dismissed it in a half dozen lines, took Darwin a, an entire volume to say it. Uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Alfred Russell Wallace, contemporary of Darwin, did not get the credit, although he, Darwin decided to publish when Wallace wrote him a letter um, saying, look what I'm doing, and Darwin immediately wrote, immediately being rich, had the thing printed up and said, look, I published first, and so far he's got away with it. Um, the uh, Mr. Wallace uh, fell into the clutches of spiritualists, uh, and that pretty much trashed his reputation against him. Okay, uh, there you, so you know Darwin's theory of evolution, and it is, um, uh, yeah, an embarrassment. Uh, uh, that's not to say it's wrong, it's just embarrassing that they call it that. Uh, there's Newton's theory of gravity, uh, and and that has this somewhat limited. It's a little bit wrong, okay. And then there's Einstein's theory of relativity, and all Einstein did was take known formulas, toss them in a box, shake them until something pretty came out, and said, "Look what I discovered. That's relativity, whether it's special or general." Um, okay, he could keep track of formulas better than I can. Okay, so theories. Um, uh, yeah, sometimes they don't really amount to that much, but Bell's inequality does. Uh, John Stuart Bell, he was a physicist born in Northern Ireland in 1928. That makes him Scotch-Irish. Um, by descent, uh, how insensitive can you get to be one of the smartest, perhaps the smartest physicist ever to live, and he was Scotch-Irish, oh, the ignominy. Um, uh, he did, uh, yeah, he did a number of things, but the big one was Bell's inequality. Um, and it can be said, uh, a phrase as, no physical theory of local hidden variables can ever reproduce all the predictions of quantum mechanics. Um, I'm sorry, um, the, uh, that's indigestible because what is all the predictions of quantum mechanics? That's, that's a tough, um, that's a tough concept to get your mind around. Um, a little too abstract. Uh, for an ordinary slob like me, uh, 
uh, what am I supposed to do with that? So let me give you an example from Wikipedia and here on the, um, if you'll care to copy it down, you can, or you can go to the script, uh, and, uh, you know, control copy it. Okay. Suppose we have a way, and we do, to take a particle, like maybe a photon or something, um, uh, with certain properties like spin, and we pretend uh, that really does mean spin, although the definition gets quite hairy uh, in this field. Assuming the parts of the particle we split are the same weight, then... Um, spin on one has to be equal to opposite of the other. And they describe that as being up, spin up or spin down. But you can, you can imagine to have conservation of momentum, they have to, there has to be a principle that, that they would have to, you know, be spinning opposite directions. Uh, if there was no conservation of momentum in the universe, of the universe would be lurching all over the place, or potentially. Uh, okay, so um, uh, it would be like the universe would be, be like, like me lurching around in the bathroom trying to find the light switch in the wee small hours. Lucky for you, the universe doesn't do that. Doesn't make much difference to me. I lurch anyway. So, if we could examine the two particles and found equal and opposite spin, then we'd say they, quote, match. They don't really match, they're spinning opposite directions, but we call that a match because it corresponds with the uh, one, one way, one the other way uh, behavior we expect. So we set up a beam going in two directions, not spin up, spin down, to the left across the lab and to the right across the lab, that kind of direction. And I have spin detectors, one spin detector recording the spin as down or up um, uh, for each time a piece of a, for each time a particle, piece of a particle is another particle, of course. Each time a particle passes, it says spin up or spin down. Then we put uh, another spin detector on the uh, other beam aligned exactly the same way. We would expect to find, and pretty much would, every time um, one is, is spin up, the other is spin down. In other words, they match the way we'd find a match every single time. Got that? Now, if we rotate uh, detector two 90 degrees, right? So, detector uh, one and detector two, you got that? You were in my hands. Okay. If they're parallel, then a photon coming through goes through both of them. If they are perpendicular to each other, photon going this way gets stopped here, a photon going this way gets stopped here. Uh, so to speak, it's not really true. But anyway, you can see, blocks all photons, or particles, uh, lets them all through, yeah, to, a, to a degree. Uh, now then, if we rotate one of them just one degree, um, uh, then there should be about 99% matching. That's because one degree out of 90 degrees is pretty close to 1% out of 100%. So close enough for gummit work, a one degree uh, rotation of one of them will produce mismatch. Um, they won't match um, uh, about 1%. All right. The... Um, so if we rotate the other particle counter one degree or rotate one of them two degrees, the mismatch between the two, according to classical physics, should be 98%, you know, more or less, 98% um, or more. 
according to classical physics. But quantum says the mismatch will be less than 99%, I may have got that backwards, but don't worry, look it up in Wikipedia. They've spent more time on that than I have. But the fact is that the amount of match between the two receptors, when they rotate it a little bit, the amount of match is not what is predicted by, predicted by classical physics, but it is well predicted by quantum physics. Uh, all right. Um, in order for the account for this difference, you have to have the particle at one detector know what happened at the other detector, right? I mean, if they're, they're coming through at random, right? If you trip this one a little bit, it's going to change what's happening over here at the other detector, the sources between them two. Change this one, changes how this one is reacting. It's still random, you know, yes, no, 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 yes, 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 no, but the match is related. So how does this detector know how that detector is set and vice versa? That is a, um, that's a puzzle. And Bill, Mr. John Bell, threw out three possible answers. He said it has to be one of these three. Uh, one is a signal from this one saying, oh, I just let a photon go through, can go back to this one and say he let a photon through, either do or don't. Uh, but, you know, maybe you change what you're going to do depending on what happens over at that detector. Remember, the source is in the middle. Got detectors flanking it on either side. So something happening way out here affects what's going on here. That route requires signal traveling between the two, and Einstein said you can't. Einstein's pretty good because he used pretty good science to throw into his equation shuffling machine. Um, okay. Uh, can't exceed the speed of light. Uh, so that explanation possible uh, is rejected. Second, the settings of the two may have been established at the foundation of the universe. You know, on day one when the Big Bang was happening, it could be that everything is preordained exactly, including how the um, scheme was set up. Uh, so you go into your lab, you do your experiment. Well, every atom in that lab follows unflinching rules, absolutely determined. We have no freedom at all. We only have the illusion of freedom. Well, people don't like that one. Um, okay, so that's generally uh, simply rejected because it's unpopular. Um, the third one is the most weird of the three, which is that what the photon, this photon, this particle, is doing over here is not fully established until the other half, or the its opposite number, has been measured over there. Um, so the uh, so something out there, there's a measurement that affects um, what this particle seems. So something is not completely real until it is um, uh, until it has been observed. Uh, give me one moment. There may be trouble with the camera here. Um, 
uh, hold with this. Okay, if y'all can see me, that's okay. I can't see myself. Uh, small lost. Okay, to carry on. Um, all right, so the reality of this photon is not fully established until the reality of its opposite number uh, has been established. Um, nothing exists so it's observed. That's what you have to understand before the old riddle, if a tree falls the first, nobody's near enough to hear it, does it make a sound? You've heard that one. It's absolutely absurd, of course, but it's, it's not even a joke until you know, understand as much as I've just given you about Bell's inequality. Um, the, uh, a, f a friend has, has, um, uh, rephrased it is, is, which is, a man standing alone in the forest says some, uh, something and no one, no one, he, no woman hears him as he's still wrong. I think that's a good, um, I think that's a good, uh, um, uh, I think that's a good rephrase. Okay, it's probably sexist. I probably should be ashamed of myself. That's okay. I'm ashamed of myself anyway. Okay, I grew up in, a, in, in an era. I grew up in an era when the third explanation was totally accepted by science. That was it. It was called the Copenhagen Interpretation. And, and that was it. Nothing existed until it was observed, until it was measured. And in medical school at Harvard, they told us that you could, with suitable manipulations and some pretty much subtle manipulations, you could change somebody's memories under certain circumstances with the right environment. He went in remembering one thing, he comes back thinking he remembers something else, and it did not happen. All right. Well, if that memory is the result of a measurement, then the measurement has changed and reality is different, right? I mean, I see something, I measure it. Ah, now I can I measure it. There is reality. Someone tampers with my brain, changes my memory. I, I see no reason why that doesn't change the measurement. And that changes reality retroactively. Um, that obviously total madness, but it kept me amused for a while. All right. Well, by now I trust you have you have seen where we're going, and that is all this non-reality, reality, locality stuff is fluff. What matters? Everything looks like it's real is real. Okay, what matters is what is done. And, yeah, completely preordained. Um, we don't have to have spooky action at distance. We don't have to go back, go to, what was it, what was, um, we don't have to exceed the speed of light. We don't have to play games with reality. It's just that time runs backwards. That's all. That's all there is to it. That's what's going on here. Uh, and that resolves uh, uh, Bell's inequality and uh, basically all of quantum mechanics now makes perfectly good sense. And the only cost is, oh, everything's preordained. Yeah. But time's going backwards, and that just means you can't change the past. And I trust by now you're accustomed to living with that. Uh, and that makes perfectly good sense. Uh, so, hope to see you again soon. We are through with the universe, I'm thinking. And then we'll have other things coming up soon. Well, 